Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm making a video today all about the medicine course at Nottingham because I've been getting quite a lot of questions on my Instagram and in the comments of my YouTube videos asking me about different aspects of the course and so I thought I'd take the time to properly explain everything and condense it into one video. If you do have any questions, feel free to leave comments or you can message me on Instagram and I'll leave my Instagram here. Obviously, because I'm a third year, I'm not going to be talking about the fourth and fifth year of the course because I don't really know what that specifically involves yet. Although I am going to be talking a bit about clinical placement and things you need to be aware of about it. I'm basically going to be going through the whole course from your first term up to placement starting in third year. And this really isn't going to be a biased review of the medicine course because although there are lots of good things to say about it, I do have a few negative aspects that I want to just flag up so that if you are considering applying you can just take this into consideration. This isn't to say that Nottingham is the only place that has these sort of negative things because obviously I don't know what other courses are like because I haven't done them but I just wanted to make people aware of what it's really like to be on this course and what you should expect if you are going to come to Nottingham in the next academic year. So your first year of medicine starts with a term on the sort of biology and chemistry behind medicine. So if you're going to go in on that first day and expect to be taught how to diagnose and manage patients and what drugs they need, then just hold off your expectations for a little bit because the first term of the course will be about biology and chemistry, sort of like what you've done in A-level, um, sort of covering the basics of science. And then after that first term of first year, from then on until the end of second year, the course is pretty similar all the way along. And the way the course works is that it's systems-based and it's lecture-based. So by systems-based, what I mean is that you do everything in blocks of systems of the body. So you'll do a few weeks on the respiratory system and the cardiovascular system. You'll do a few weeks on neurology and diseases affecting the brain, you'll do a few weeks on liver diseases, a couple of weeks on kidney diseases, so you'll cover everything system by system. And this is a good way to learn because it allows you to really focus your learning in those blocks. And each week within those blocks you'll have a case to work around. So for example if you're doing a respiratory week you might have a case about an asthma patient and while your lectures will kind of be geared towards that case, it is not problem-based learning at Nottingham, it is fundamentally lecture-based. So you'll have lectures on all different aspects of medicine, pharmacology, pathology, anatomy, and these will all sort of tie together quite nicely and allow you to, at the end of the week, have a plenary where you focus all of what you've learned and you answer some questions about the case that you were presented at the beginning of the week with a consultant in that area. This is also supported by pretty much weekly dissections. These last between three and four hours and you dissect a part of the body that's kind of relevant to what you're studying in lectures. So if you're doing respiratory, you'll probably be dissecting the thorax and the lungs. Throughout your first two years, you will dissect a whole body. You'll be assigned a cadaver, a dead body, between 12 of you, and then you'll split into six and you'll rotate during the sessions. Six of you will be working on the dissection, six of you will be doing other activities with like bones or prosections, and then you'll swap halfway and the other six of you will be working on the cadaver. And you'll carry on dissections until you've done all of the body and everything inside it so you will get to see everything. Pros about full body dissection is it's really great to put everything together into context and see how everything fits together. Cons of it is that you're dissecting it yourself so if you do accidentally snip a nerve that you shouldn't have when you then come to try and find that nerve and see where it leads you'll have cut it in half so you won't be able to. So there is that aspect of it that you might sort of make mistakes, you might accidentally cut part of a muscle off, but um, I still do think it was an enjoyable way to learn anatomy. As well as um, your main lectures and your dissections, all of your sort of main learning is supplemented with seminars where you will talk about ethics, an epidemiology course which is embedded into the first year, so this is all about how to calculate odds ratios, risk ratios. You will most likely find it incredibly boring, um, but you know, good luck with that, you just have to do it, it's not too bad. You also have some sort of psychology, behavioural science type lectures. I do talk a lot more about the different aspects of the course in terms of um, 
like what you do in seminars and workshops and practicals and things. I talk more about that in another video already, so I'm not going to go on and on about that because there are other points I want to get to, but I will link that video down below in case you want to watch it. And you will be learning clinical skills. So throughout first and second year, you l basically learn examination techniques. So you learn how to do respiratory exam, abdominal exam, cardiovascular exam, how to take a peak flow, assess the peripheral pulses, how to assess a joint. You learn quite a lot of clinical skills and then you go and you practice quite a few of them, most of them, in a hospital environment. And you also have GP visits. So you do have some clinical exposure which is more than a lot of medical schools might have, but it is quite limited. So you're not like on the wards all day or anything. You're just like going in for a morning and then you're going to the GP for like three, four days in the year. The next thing I wanted to talk about was flexibility and the opportunity for you to choose what you learn. So most likely the medical school will promote this on the open day and it is true that you do get to choose a few of the modules. So you get to choose one module in first year and you get to choose two in second year and you get to choose two in third year. You get to rank your preferences out of the options. You might not necessarily get your preference. I think I got my top choice maybe like once or twice and then the others were my second choice or even some of them were like my fourth choice so you're not always going to get what you want but whatever you do like it will be okay um what i would think carefully about i mean obviously you do want to pick your option module based on what you actually are interested in because it's going to be more enjoyable but there is the sort of chance that you could pick a, a module based on the assessment so if the assessment looks like it's going to be easier then it probably will be there were some modules I would tell you what all my different modules were but there were some that were very exam based and required a lot of revision and learning um which is good in that you acquired lots of new knowledge but it was it was a lot of work and then others would be more kind of like writing a piece of coursework and doing a presentation and they would be a lot more chilled and people would perform a lot better in those ones and they aren't kind of moderated throughout all of the medical school and this is one of the big things that has bothered me and other others I know um throughout our years so far is that the mark you get for the optional modules is quite dependent on the module you do and so I know people that got like 90% plus in their optional modules which is really high to get at university um, and there was just no way that I could have done that in some of mine so do choose carefully but do choose what you're interested in because it will make it a lot nicer for you. Um, the optional modules I did were narratives and health in first year so this was all about um, how sort of telling stories and talking to patients um, in a kind of storytelling way can help them with certain disorders for, for example like I think we did about PTSD it was quite a long time ago I can't really remember but that one was very chilled and I just did a piece of coursework and it was done so that was a really nice one um, in second year I did Parkinson's disease which be careful if you're going to choose this it's going to be very biochemical it was very intense like it, there was a lot to learn we did it with the third year um, biochemistry students and we were only second years at the time scientifically that one was very hard and it was an exam and an exam essay so not piece of coursework but an exam under timed conditions so this was like the big this was probably like the most challenging module I've done for the whole of medical school my other one in second year was defects in development. This was looking at congenital diseases and for that we did a group presentation, which is always interesting, and um, an essay based exam. And then in third year I did one on the cardiovascular effects of cancer treatments, which was really interesting. That was just an essay and one on cognitive neuroscience so I did my essay about ADHD and that was like one of my favorite modules I've ever done it was hard but it was it was really interesting and yeah in third year all the um, option modules are coursework so they're, they're a bit fairer in that way okay so now this is the biggest thing I want to talk about and that is the fact that Nottingham does a five-year course and you get an extra degree within those five years so what other medical schools do is if you want to do an extra degree then you do an extra year, you take a year out, an intercalation year, and you do your degree and then you come back and rejoin the course again. So then you're in medical school for six years. What Nottingham does is they put their degree within the five years of medical schools, so it's like embedded into the course, but it's not a full degree, it's a BMED Sci. So what this means is, and this isn't really relevant if you're only thinking about applying to medical school at this point, but basically when you get to fifth year and you have to apply for your 
a job as a doctor, as a foundation doctor. It's a points-based system and the amount of points that you get determines how likely it is that you'll get your top preference of hospital like or area of hospitals where you want to be working as a doctor and these points 50 of them are based on an exam in fifth year which you don't need to think about yet and the other 50 are based on your academic achievements and within that <sighs> this is a lot to explain and within those 50 points they are calculated based on your decile so how high up you are in ranking in your medical school and whether you've done any additional degrees. So a normal intercalation degree, I think you can get a maximum of four points. So if you got first in it, you'd get four extra points for it. For the BMED site at Nottingham, you can only get a maximum of three. So it isn't worth the same as a full degree that you'd get for an intercalation year, but it does get you a point. So if you get a first, you get three points, two, one, you get two points, two, two, one point. If you get a third, you get nothing. This kind of has a tiny bit of importance because if you're thinking, oh great, I can go to Nottingham, I can get an extra degree, um, but I only have to be at med school for five years. Yes, partly true, but the degree isn't worth the same as an intercalation year one would be. Also, something you need to bear in mind is if Nottingham is managing to fit in a whole degree into their five-year course, how are they doing this? Isn't the course going to be really jam-packed? And the answer is, yes, it is. So this is something I really want people to be aware of before they apply to Nottingham or before they like firm Nottingham. What it means is that at the beginning of third year, you do a research methods module. So this module is all about how to conduct research, how to do a systematic review, how to do the relevant statistics that are required in research. A lot of it is a bit like A-level stats if you've done that. Obviously a little bit simpler than A-level stats, but it's that kind of thing. And you then straight away do an exam in the first few weeks, you do an exam on all of that module. And then you carry out your research project and you start this in around October and you hand it in mid-January. So this gives you about three months to do an entire dissertation, which is quite a push. And on top of that, you have your two other coursework modules going on, and there you have to hand those essays in sort of end of November time. So you suddenly go from being a very scientific person that's always sat in lectures and never written any essays, to suddenly writing two essays potentially and a dissertation in a very short time frame. Straight after your dissertation is handed in you then do a week of lectures about infectious diseases, you have a week off to revise and then you do an exam and then after that you have a two-week viva period. So in this period you will have your viva which is kind of like an interview with an academic about your dissertation. Um, it can be anywhere in those two weeks but you have to sort of stay in Nottingham for those two weeks. So it's kind of like a holiday, but it isn't because you have to just sort of be waiting for your viva. Um, and then straight after that, you go into clinical placement. And so what this means is that then, because you've had to do all of this research project, you won't get any holiday in third year. Your summer holiday will also be two weeks. Potentially they might lengthen this to like three weeks, I think, but it won't be more than four weeks, definitely. So while everyone else, different university courses or different medical schools potentially, are having their three month summer holiday, you're gonna have two weeks. So for me, this kind of worked out a bit weirdly because obviously, because of coronavirus, we've all had to come home. So I'm kind of on a weird like holiday at home, but not a holiday sort of thing. So I'm not really experiencing how bad that might be, but I know that people do find it quite, like, intense. And it only gets worse because then you go straight into fourth year in July and then you do, like, 40 weeks of placement and people say fourth year is really, really challenging. I want to explain a little bit more about dissertations because I did get some questions about these um, on my Instagram. So... How it works is that there are a lot of different home bases. So home bases are like areas of medical study. So it could be medical education, it could be cancer, uh, respiratory, neuroscience. And you rank your top home bases and then you get assigned one. You might not get your top choice. I didn't get my top choice, I got my second choice, which was clinical neuroscience. And then within your home base, there are a whole array of projects. Depends on how many people are in each home base. Mine had about like 25 projects and you have to rank your top 10 of these. The projects are very varied. Some of them are labs based. So that means most likely you're gonna be in labs like nine to five most days. There are other sort of types of 
projects. So they have qualitative data studies, which is where you have to sort of interview people. They have survey based ones where you have to send out surveys. I did a clinical data one. So I did actually help to build up the data set in that I did get to like assess a few patients. But the majority of the data set was already done for me. And then I had to do a lot of stats on it and get my results. And I would just want to warn people as well at this point that the guidance you get from like your supervisor varies a lot. Some people were handheld a lot more and they were shown exactly like what stats to do and how to like do their project. I didn't get any help, um, especially with the math side of like my project. I basically had to come up with it all myself. So that was like the biggest hurdle. But when it came to then actually writing it, it wasn't too bad. Like I did kind of enjoy the research project and I did get quite good results in terms of like what my study actually found. We haven't got our marks back for our dissertations yet. So yeah, I did enjoy it, but think really carefully about if it's what you actually want. Like, do you actually want to do this research project for three months? I'd say, like, I would kind of recommend it because if you're thinking about research anyway, even just, like, in the back of your mind, you think, oh, one day I might want to go into research, then it's quite good to get a taste of it and just to see what it's like and to see if you enjoy it because even if you don't enjoy it, at least then you could rule out you never want to do research ever again, which is probably what a lot of people in my year now I think. So then you finally get to start clinical placement and another question I often had when I was applying to medical school was how does placement actually work? Like where do you actually end up? What hospital do you go to? And so in Nottingham I can tell you exactly where currently the hospital placements are. So they have Nottingham and this is made up of QMC, which is the hospital where you will have all your lectures, like, in first and second year. So QMC will be the place, like, basically next to campus where you go all the time. So that's really, really close. It's also City Hospital, which is a sort of 25, 30 minute bus ride away and the bus is free. And then there's Derby and this is like a 40 minute maybe commute to get to Derby. And then the other three places are Boston, Lincoln, Chesterfield, Old Four, sorry, and Mansfield. And in those four, they're residential. So you don't have to. I mean, you could commute if you wanted, but I don't think many people do. Um, for those hospitals, you actually go and you stay in hospital accommodation. And it's good in that you are really close to the hospital. So you can just like get out of bed, walk across the hospital. It's great. But obviously you then won't, in, during the week, you then won't be living in your house in Nottingham with the rest of your housemates. So it's something to bear in mind. But I think this is kind of the same in all medical schools because they have to have like a lot of hospitals they can use and obviously throughout your two and a half years of placement you will rotate round so you won't just be stuck in one place for two and a half years. So yeah that was just a rundown of everything you can expect from the Nottingham medical course. So I hope it was helpful and has answered some of your questions. If you're interested in medical school or especially like University of Nottingham do subscribe to my channel because I'll be posting a lot more videos about it. Yeah thank you very much for watching and see you very soon. Bye!